Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Main Street Moments podcast. This is Kathy. And Brian. And we want to thank everybody for listening. We're also on Spotify, if you choose to listen to us on that. And uh, Brian went to the Magic Kingdom yesterday. It had been about six weeks since you've been. Because yeah, it's been a while. It's been busy. And then a couple times you wanted to go, and it was pouring rain, yeah. which is no fun to drive in. Yeah, and I went by... The Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel yesterday. You you drove by it. Yeah, and if you didn't know what it was, you would know. And it looks to me, I I drove by the, you know, this is the $6,000 for two days. For two days, yeah, for two days. two days. They say, they say, it's six thousand dollars for two days and two nights. So it sounds like you're getting four days, but two days, it's still two days. Okay, I drove by it. It looks like where they would like take the garbage to put it in a compactor. And if you go and look at it online, it looks like an unfinished building. This reminds me of the jail in yeah, ja- yeah. downtown Broward County. It looks like a jail. I mean, the outside yeah. of the building. Here's yeah, the deal. It does look like a jail. If you're going to spend about six grand for basically a weekend trip, Friday through Sunday, okay, which goes by in a blip, I think they should at least make the outside of the building look like an actual ship. I don't understand because every other hotel on Disney looks amazing from the outside. Even the value resorts Mm -hmm. look better than this. This looks like really like literally like the jail downtown. Well, you know, I'll tell you this. In in Fort Lauderdale. It's crazy. Everyone has been griping about the price because, you know, it's what it is. But, but we have finally gotten a look inside. A tiny look. Galactic Star Cruiser. They only show you a little bit because it's yeah. so unimpressive. They, <laughs> you know, they they show you what they think is the best parts, and even that's not impressive. If it opened up and it was spectacular and blew people's minds, yeah. people would be like, "Okay, I'll save up for it." Now right. it a, it's a once in a lifetime thing I'm going to do. But I'll tell you this: I went to the opening day of Galaxy's Edge, and Galaxy's Edge, except for the Millennium Falcon. Okay, and and I yeah I understand right you know there's there's a couple good things and there. Rise is a great ride. Rise is a great ride, but when you go to the land, Batu. It, it's it, you know Batu is like it's like Morocco at Epcot. It's very generic, except for the Falcon. Now I went there on opening day, and of course when I saw the Falcon, I you know got goosebumps. But when I stepped onto the Falcon. I mean, I I got light on my feet. I almost collapsed. I was so you really feel I like was, you're on the ship. I was so overwhelmed. It's very good. It was like my boyhood dream yeah. come true. Right. And it's any, exciting. Anytime I go on the Falcon, it's amazing. It looks perfect. Now they they released a very short, highly produced promo. With the kid from the Goldbergs. Yeah, and it's on our Facebook group. So if you go to Main Street Moments on Facebook and join the group, um, I put it up there. I posted it. You can Mm -hmm. see the whole trailer for yourself. And people are reacting to it negatively, very negatively. and and, For a good reason. And um, nobody has really been there and given, like, um, I'm sure the trackers will, and and given a review. No, the trackers trackers may not be let into the pre. (laughs) You know know why? they? You know, I'll tell you why. It's not because of the tracker controversy. They do not want people to go inside and vlog the Star Cruiser because not. it is disappointing. Well, maybe they'll change some things. So everybody that's reacting to this it knows as much as we do, okay? Because a lot of people leave comments, well, you haven't been there or you haven't been on that ride. I get that. I'll never be there at these But prices. everybody is reacting to this trailer who has not been actually in person just going Who's by this go trailer. This? You got to be rich. And from looking at the trailer and maybe Disney will make some changes. The, the feedback mm-hmm. has been extremely negative and with good reason. Uh, what you see, they show like a hallway. They don't show much. They show an area where there's like fake computers. That's and the it, bridge, the bridge. And it honestly, Star Trek from the sixties looked more high tech than this. Now you don't see any ships flying by. There's like a big planet, which is cool in the windows. So I'm sure once they have ships flying by, it'll look cooler. Mm. But um, no. But the the, no. the 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 computers on the bridge and everything, you know, of course, in the video, they have cool lighting and all this stuff. They're very unimpressive and look dated. They don't look anything, you know, I know Star Wars is supposed to be in a galaxy far, far away or long time ago. But I think they need to up their game with the, the technology. And then they show. Well, let's, let's talk about the bridge for yeah, a second. Okay. Yeah. They showed the bridge. 
They briefly. They, and they show everything very briefly because they don't want you to look at it too hard. No. Now I, I'm looking at the computers in the bridge and this little short promo they did with the kid from the Goldbergs is Ooh, I, I love him by the way. He's funny. Yeah. I feel very sorry for him because he was in this. Okay. And they he, they made him do it, ABC Disney, you know. Yeah. Um it's they have a lot of fancy lighting and things going on, and the computers there. The, the, the bridge does not look like anything from the Star Wars universe. Okay. This Galactic Star Cruiser should be Princess Leia's ship. I agree with you okay? completely. And Absolutely, this, this looks nothing like anything we've seen in Star Wars. And when they first come in, they go down this hallway mm-hmm. that has some doors in it that look like they go into the rooms, and it looks like. Uh, backstage at the old Body Wars at Epcot. I it mean, looked to it me, looks really b- cheap. It looked to cheap. me, honestly, like a high school or a hospital. Yeah, a hospital. You yeah, know, it looks like a floor hospital. Is, it's got yeah. almost like that got terrazzo yeah. looking floor. Yeah, it looks awful. And um, it looks you awful. have like gold colored elevators. And then the walls are just G- very generic. white. What they could have done in that hallway, which would have been really cool, is they could have had some mock windows and you see and you see space. But nothing like that. It's extremely unimpressive. Now, we, you know, they haven't shown the rooms in this trailer. Yeah, for a good reason. But. I can tell. I don't see anything. Like, I agree with you. My first thought was this should be Princess Leia's ship that you see at the end of Rogue One, which is an incredible movie, and at the beginning of Episode Four. And they could have made the outside look like her ship. And they could have said, you're going to. Travel with, and they even could have had somebody playing Princess Leia walking yeah, around, fact, and, the, and R two D two and three PO, and all the and guys this, in her crew. In this promo they've released that we're talking about, which you guys can find on on YouTube, it's in our, in Facebook, our Facebook group, group too. Yeah. Um, so then they they go down this looks like a hospital corridor. They go through this very generic bridge that is less impressive than than Star Tours, and Star Tours is like 30 years old or something, yeah, okay? Yeah, it's really, eh. You know, and then, then they go into this, the room, which is where the bar is. We think. Yeah, no, it's the bar, because <laughs> there's a bar. He goes and gets a drink at the bar. He goes into the bar, and they use a lot of fancy lighting, including lens flare, like a J.J. Abrams yes, Star Trek movie. Yes, it looks like the Star Trek movie. With and the, yeah, they Abrams. have all these special effects and lighting effects going on because it's so unimpressive. They've got to use effects. I, I, when you go there, these effects won't be there. You're going to see with the naked eye. You mean there's not going to be lens flares no, glaring off of you? And, and they that, did something really bizarre. Yeah, they had this woman who was a, a character, I guess— the same species as one of the performers at Jabba's Palace, maybe. I thought it was like Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tana with the, the. Is it? I don't think she's it, got the thing, the, uh, the horn it thingy may, coming may, out the it ear may things, be, whatever it you call it. Could them. be, and yeah, she I think so. and um, she comes out and sings a very preachy song. Welcome to the new world, which sounds like nothing from the Star Wars. No, it's really strange universe. And then the Gilbergs kid comes out and talks to the Imagineer, and he says, "You've just meant she's got a name, uh, yeah. Guyana no clue. or something." It starts no, with that's a G. from Star Trek. Uh, Gaina. G- no, Guinan is Whoopi Goldberg oh, in Star yeah. Trek, it's but it, it's a name similar to that. Yeah, Guinan. And it's like, oh wow, who who is that? Like he's supposed to be impressed. Yeah, like nobody, Woo. you know. Th- and this, if this Galactic Star Cruiser was as impressive as the Millennium Falcon was on the inside. Then he could say, okay, I'm going to save up. It's going to be a once-in-a-lifetime event. This doesn't look like Star Wars. The only thing Star Wars about it is they put the name Star Wars on it. It's very generic um, from what I've seen. And the rooms look kind of cool, but the rooms are kind of generic too. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like as far as your experience. They have all these experiences, like they did something with lightsabers, but you could do that in Batu. You can go buy no, they have a, lightsabers. No, there's, there's like a, a camp or something. No, there's a. Uh, they have upgraded the lightsabers. Mm. If you stay at the Star Cruiser, you get. I don't know if you get to keep it or just get to use it while you're on mm. this overpriced ripoff that costs more than a real cruise. You know, I, I'm <laughs> yeah. go, I'm going go on a Disney cruise instead, a real cruise. In January, I'm going on a cruise, not a Disney cruise, but I'm going on a luxury cruise on Celebrity Cruises. Mm-hmm. It's a 9-day cruise. It's less money than than the Star that's Cruiser crazy. that's in the employee parking lot. And you're going to Jamaica at Disney and Hollywood everything. Studios. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to Aruba and Jamaica and other countries 9 days, you know, and this this is in the employee parking lot. It 
Universal Studios. Or I said Universal. I wish it would be. It'd be. If Universal did this, like Harry Potter, it'd be beautiful. Probably. But Disney, you know, I remember when, before Galaxy's Edge opened up, I remember like a week before it opened up, I was at Universal Studios Orlando and I was going through all the Harry Potter things and I was thinking to myself, I, I was like, wow, you know, the reason we're having Galaxy's Edge is because Universal did Diagon Alley because they did something so perfect and yeah. so from the movie. And I know next week, I even vlogged this and I was mm-hmm. talking about it on the vlog. I'm like, this is why we're getting a Star Wars land. And then I go there and I'm like, what is this place? Is, you know, it, you know, it's, it's, it's Morocco at the Epcot, like I said earlier. This Star Cruiser, I've been suspicious of it for a long time because they haven't shown it to us right. on the inside. If it really would blow you away, they'd be all up in there with cameras and everything. And this little sneak peek they have, it's... It, it's strange. Rich people that are the only yeah. people that can afford to go, right? Rich people don't get rich by throwing their money away on ripoffs. And I think the wealthy that go to this... Mm-hmm are going to feel ripped off. I think for the amount of money you're spending, it needs to be an absolutely incredible, incredible experience. And by the way, this cruise ship, you don't go anywhere. Yeah, you're It doesn't take you anywhere. It's all in your mind, okay? It's like, it's all tricks and smoke and mirrors, and that's fine, but and a lot of it is has to do with your imagination. But it seems very um, unimpressive to me, and a lot of people are ripping it Generic. Online saying that yeah. it looks very generic, very cheap. That's a word a lot of people are using that the the set the, is like a set. Like you're like on the set of making a movie. You know, I'll tell you what it what it really looks like. You know, I mentioned Body Wars a little bit. It what I have seen of it, it reminds me of the early, early exhibits at Epcot Center, which which mm-hmm. are were spectacular. You know, Body Wars and Captain EO and everything. But that was 1982 when so it's that like you're, up. it feels like you're walking into a set or with like dated, where, where kids would go and play with little computers yeah, and nothing happens. It's, it's not. Yeah. And they, they do yeah. punch it in the hyperspace, but I've been able to do that for a couple of years over on the Millennium Falcon. Exactly. So that's not even like something new. Yeah. This is going to be a disaster. They really, if they're not going to do this, but they should shut down Galaxy's Edge, turn it into Tatooine mm. and, and retheme Make this and rebrand Princess it. Make Leia's ship. Yeah, this is going to be a disaster. And you know what? I, I think they deserve it because, you know, they, they, they did not learn from their mistakes at Galaxy's Edge. Now, you're going to see a lot of vloggers who go. If any vlogger goes. <laughs> $6,000. Well, okay. Say they get comped. People do get comped for the cruises. They are going to want some vloggers to go and talk about this. So if that happens, if they comp vloggers to go, I'm not going to mention names. And they tell you how wonderful it is and how exciting it is. Take that with a huge grain of salt. Because most Disney vloggers that do this for a living are never going to bash Disney. Because they want to be in good with Disney. They're not going to tell you exactly the truth like we will. Now, we're never going to go on this ship, I'll tell you that right now. Not at that price. If it was spectacular, they would be giving detailed tours of the entire thing. Maybe they will down the road. Out of desperation. You know, I, I would imagine there's a good chance mm-hmm. that they're not going to let people vlog inside of there. You know, Disney has you recently right. put some restrictions on filming um, on the road that goes around the Magic Kingdom. They put they have signs up on the road. You're kidding? Yeah, they did a few months ago. What they have. It well, a lot of people don't know this, mm-hmm. um, and you can you can drive backstage to to the rear of the Magic Kingdom anytime mm-hmm. you want. Uh, if you t- if you continue on the road that goes in front of the contemporary, instead of turning left to the Magic Kingdom, Just go straight. Keep going straight, and you can get all kinds of backstage. And people used to go back there all the time. I've been back there, and you could you know take your phone and re- make recordings mm-hmm. and stuff. They have signs up on the highway now about um, filming is prohibited, and you can be mm-hmm. trespassed for doing it. So I'm I'm guessing they're going to stop people from filming. You know, when um, Rise of the Resistance, for example, wasn't ready when the land opened, but the part with the stormtroopers was almost completed, and they took people back there and let them see it. They took a p- the picture, and, and it was spectacular. This, it's going be um, it's going to be a disaster. Well, I think what they're planning on is for people, it'll be a once in a lifetime thing. They'll never come back. And they figure there's enough people in the world that love Star Wars that will spend the $6,000 to 
to come. I guess that's for four people. Do, do or, you know, Kathy? At yeah. that price, yeah. And th- this is this is the truth. Okay, this I'm not. Yeah, there's there is a tour company that takes you to Tunisia and takes you to the sites where they filmed the star, the original Star Wars movie and the prequels in Tunisia. You even get to go to outside of the cantina and most likely spaceport and see Luke's house. You get to see the, the Luke Skywalker's house. You can even go to, it's a hotel. You can even go to uh, the, what they, they take you to the igloo looking thing, the entrance, but the part where you like look down in the ground where Luke's house is, where he had the milk. That's another location. You can go and stay for less money than this. Yeah. For less money than this. Yeah. If you're a so, true star Wars fan, do that yeah. because this hotel yeah. is, from what I'm seeing in front, people have said a very cheap simulation. Yeah. And I think what's going to happen is people are going to go and they might not let you film in there, but you're going to see a lot of people on Twitter and online making comments and saying very negative things. I think they've really dropped the ball. I mean, we've said that all along. Other than Rise of the Resistance and the Millennium Falcon, and even Rise of the Resistance, I feel should take place with Han and Leia and Luke, not mm-hmm. with these new people, and do yeah. something with Vader. But I feel they really dropped the ball. Now, the Millennium Falcon is cool, and that's and Rise is a cool ride, but the whole land could be so much better. And this hotel, from what everybody's saying, just looks like a real yeah. bust and over overpriced and cheap. They said it looks cheap. Yeah. Now, yesterday, I went to the Magic Kingdom, and I heard a cast member say something I've never heard them say before. Hmm. Two words. Universal Studios. It was a, it was a funny thing. I couldn't believe mm. it. I, I went to the Magic Kingdom yesterday. It was a Saturday, and it was very, very foggy. If you go to our YouTube channel, Main Street Moments on YouTube, where we put our Disney vlogs, I, I have a video of the fog. It was the thickest fog I've ever seen at Walt Disney World, and it was a little scary driving in. You'll, you'll take a look, but um, I wanted to take the boat over to Magic Kingdom, not the monorail, because you don't have to wear a mask on the boat. Right. Okay. And the boat doesn't break down. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get stranded for, th- you know, hours. Yeah. You know, up in the air. But uh, the fog was so thick, you couldn't even see the boat. So it was closed down. So But a lot of people were going towards the boats, even though they were shut down, you didn't know. And they had a cast member saying there, oh, no, the the boats are are not going, they're not going to the Magic Kingdom right now because of the fog. When the fog is this heavy, you could end up at Universal Studios. And I heard him tell this joke to like 10 different people. I was very surprised. That is really weird. I've never heard it. It was a Disney cast member. Yeah. I don't think they're even supposed to mention Universal. And I I did not include it. I would think that's a big faux pas. I didn't include it in my vlog. Because I was afraid the guy would get in trouble. Like, yeah. I, I was afraid that if it got back to them, not that Disney's wanted to read our YouTube channel, yeah. but I was afraid that if, if it got back to them, <laughs> that the guy you could never get in know trouble who for that. Who's watching what. Yeah. And I'll tell you one other thing, though, I observed um, at the Magic Kingdom yesterday. Okay. The, uh, there was a story that came out recently about something that happened a few months ago. There was a guest who uh, got in a, in, a, in a little trouble. Uh, during a parade, a cast member and a guest got into an argument about standing in Main Street, and mm. the guest put their hand on the cast member, and there was some 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 problems. And of course, anytime there is any type of parade or cast members or things go- that are going on down the street, they you know they have cast members that follow them and come in front of them to make sure that you're not in the way. But I thought when I was there yesterday, I thought the cast members were a little more rude to the guest about not being in the street. They weren't as polite about it. I think the problem is – It's just observation. I I think people in general are more rude than they used to be. uh And also, I think there's so many rules at Disney that they have to enforce now – that it's no, they're constantly, they're, they're like the police yeah. up there. They're, the, the cast members yeah. are constantly enforcing these rules with COVID and all these other things. Now they have all these new rules. And it seems like Disney World is just getting more strict and and more controlling over what you do. Now they do have to move people. What was the beef? That they he was in the way? Or, I mean, that's t- normal. 
Oh no, I wasn't there for the incident with the with the confrontation, but it was it's recently was in the news. But, oh, okay. But when I saw and I saw this for more than one event on Main Street, when the cast members were getting people out of the way, they were more aggressive about it yeah, than they normally are. They I weren't think, as they weren't as clever about it. I think, like I said, I think people. Maybe I'm wrong. Seems these days people there's like anger issues. In, I don't know in society, and um. I think that there's so many rules they have to enforce, and I think they've they've encouraged the cast members to really lay down the law. Yeah, there was um, a couple with their kids that had annual passes, and I read this article, and they um, wanted to get into the Magic Kingdom, but they did not make a reservation, and they would not let them in. Absolutely would not let them in. I understand they have rules, and the couple threw an absolute fit. I understand that, but I feel like back in the day, they, they would have just let them in and not made a big deal about it. Yeah. So they threw a fit. It got in the news. It was all over. People were talking about it. That's not a good look for Disney because people will see that. There's a lot of people that aren't happy about their reservation system, and they'll see that, and they'll be like, screw Disney. I mean, that's BS. I think Disney needs to be a little more flexible with things. What's the big deal if you let in four people that – have tickets, but forgot to make a reservation. I mean, yeah. is it really going to sh shatter? But it seems like they're so restrictive with numbers. Like they're really monitoring numbers. Who gets on a ride? Who gets in? Who eats what? Who yeah. goes here? Who goes where? It seems like the CEO or like Disney's become very micromanagey about things. And, yeah. and it's less fun. A well, lot of people complain about I, that. Um, okay, this reservation thing. I showed up a couple months ago to the Magic Kingdom. I had my reservation. And I go up to the gate and I put my, you know, card on the thing and it was, it didn't turn green. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? They said, and they, they came up, they said, you don't have a reservation. I said, yeah, I, I do have a reservation, you know, and uh, they looked it up. They said, no, you, you don't have a reservation. I said, I have a reservation. I said, I drove three hours to get here this morning. You know, can't you just let me in? And they went and got a supervisor mm. and I had a reservation for that day, the next month, I hit the wrong month when I made the reservation, and they did let me in. Yeah. Well, they did let me in, you know, and I don't th – this thing with the reservations – I don't know if they do that now. The, the secret's out about the reservations, all right? Everybody knows this now. The reservations allow Disney to schedule their employees, and they know how – they have to have so many employees per guest, rat, ra, uh, you yeah. know, no, and, it, and they're doing their scheduling on this. This is what everyone's saying now. It's ridiculous. I think they should be a little more flexible. Yes. But it almost seems like the cast member would get in trouble if they let in. And it's, you know how when you work in retail and they cash out at the end of the night and they're like a few bucks off? Oh, yeah. You're like there all night. I remember working in retail in high school. And if they were even a few cents off, the manager would have to go through everything all over again and redo the entire ticket and all the receipts and everything. So I feel like Disney... With this, with not letting this family in, I, I just think, you know, then they made a big scene and this and that. If it was me, I would have just said, just go and don't worry about it. But I guess Disney's being really super strict about that. But to me, I just think a little flexibility is a better, now, well, you know, like I said, now know, that she made a big deal and, and now it's all over. And a lot of people that might really is, turn them off. You know, a lot of people don't like that anyway. Disney is, this is a common theme. Everyone's talking about this. There's too many rules. And, you know, it's. You don't have to wear your mask at Disney unless you're indoors. So it's, you know, I tell you, it's like Karate Kid. Mask on, mask off, mask on, mask off. Yeah, they need to and, get rid of the masks now. There's no need for that anymore. Yeah, and um, I went into, um, oh, I forgot the, the name of the, of the building where you get the uh, photo op with Mickey and Minnie. I went in there yesterday. Like the town square? The I can't remember the name of the building where you get the Tinkerbell picture yeah, and the Mickey and Minnie when picture. you first walk in off to the right. I think I, it's like the theater, the town square theater. Yeah, I walked in there. Somebody else came behind me. They didn't have a mask on, and they went in, and two cast members chased them down yeah, to put the mask thing. on. thing. They have too many rules that the cast members are having to enforce, and they need to relax a little bit. I think enough people have been vaccinated or have whatever you want, you know, natural immunity, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's as necessary now as it was six months well, they, ago. Well, they didn't have to have a mask a few months ago, and they I brought know. it back. Yeah, they changed it, and now, you know, um, it's like I just think they need to stop turning the cast members into like the Disney Gestapo. Okay, so on a more positive note, it seems that the trams are coming back to 
Walt Disney World. Very um, soon. We don't have an exact about time date. And Universal kind of trolled Disney and put out a tweet saying, where we're going, we don't need trams, which is from a nod from Back to the Future. Well, you know, the trams not running at Walt Disney World. I've been saying something about that for a long time, and I noticed other people have mm-hmm. been talking about this on Twitter. I've been saying that the reason Walt Disney World has not been operating the trams is because they want people to pay for their preferred parking, which is I think that's much true. more money. And I noticed about two weeks ago, I've been saying that for months, about two weeks ago, I started seeing other people talking about yeah. it. Yeah. So maybe that's, I'm not saying because of me, but I'm saying because people are on Twitter and everyone's starting to talk about it. Maybe that's why they're bringing back the trams. When I get there in the morning, I I usually don't take the tram because I just want to get in there quick. But in the afternoon when I'm tired, when I'm leaving the park. That's when you really want it. The tram is a lifesaver. And it's really difficult when it's hot. Stephen Colbert had gone to Disney a couple months ago and the trams weren't working. And it was really hot. And he made a big deal about it. Oh, on maybe his that's show. why people are talking about it. Yeah, I didn't know he, he made was a big that. deal about it on his show. How they had to walk like ten miles, and it was a hundred degrees. Stephen you Colbert know, doesn't get like a VIP. I, I don't know. He has to walk guide. to his car like everybody else. But really? you know, people can have heat stroke doing that, and it gets very hot in Orlando. Now it's not an issue. It's nice out, but you know, nine months out of the year. It's hot as hell, and people get really hot. So I'm glad they're going to be back. So we this don't must know be, when. It says soon. This must be because of Stephen Colbert. Not because of us. I thought it was because of me. <laughs> I'd been talking about this. I thought I started something, and then Stephen no. Colbert. I find I it, think you started. I think I don't know started, but you're. I think you mentioning parking in preferred. Yeah, maybe you started. That. I find it impossible to believe that Stephen Colbert parks where the rest of us park. Like just it is shocking. Just the other day, Captain America was there, and Chris I, I, Evans. Chris Evans, yeah. And Disney he, World or Disneyland? Walt Disney World Orlando. There was a picture of him up top the uh, train oh, station. Cool. I bet you he didn't park in the regular. Well, wait, how did he else. get up at the tri- the train station? We can't get up well, there. He's Captain America. <laughs> That's true. But you know, I'm part of the uh, any, Marvel universe. Any time I'm at Walt Disney World and I see a VIP tour guide, I am always looking at who they're with. Yeah, lots of times it's a celebrity. It it can be sometimes. Yeah, Yeah. you've seen quite a few there. If you're at Disney World, that's a good tip. If you see one of the VIP tour guides, and they stand out because they don't wear the same uniform. They have Mm -hmm. like a vest, or they used to, it was like plaid, and they definitely stand out a little more, and they'll have like a crowd around them. Nine times out of ten, you might see somebody famous. Yeah, yesterday when I was there, there was a VIP guard. I was sitting on Main Street, and the VIP tour guide was with his group. And they had kids with them too. They had little kids with them, and they and the VIP group gets they get to go backstage, right? Yeah. So he took out his phone, and he said, "Well, before we go backstage, I got to call the boss." And he call, picks up the phone, and he's like, "Mickey, oh, that's awesome. Uh, can, I'm I'm with my group. Can we come backstage?" And he and he's like, "Are you sure it's okay to come backstage?" Now the kids were all excited. That is one thing I would love to do is do the VIP tour, but it is super. But see, to me. Yeah, that is worth the money more than the Star Cruiser. That is worth the money because a private tour for a day is going to put you back a couple thousand dollars because there's a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, It's like three hundred an hour, and there's like a minimum of five hours, so it's at least fifteen hundred dollars somewhere around there. I would much rather spend money on that for the day at Magic Kingdom than the Star Cruiser. Don't you agree? I think it'd be worth it because yeah. I've seen the VIP. T- yeah. You went on a VIP tour to Epcot a long time ago with. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I went with and some. I went with a couple of actors when I was I was younger, and it was a magic. And Kingdom. you said it was, it was incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. You know, they have a small utilidor system at Epcot. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that, but it it basically you know it, it it's like having the fast pass. Yeah, but they also don't. They also kind of tell you little things about the park and. I, if I was going to do the VIP tour, I would do Magic Kingdom, hands down, because yeah. you get to see a lot of cool things, and mm-hmm. that's like the first park and the main park yeah. of the whole resort. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for listening. Again, we're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or you can listen on YouTube, Main Street Moments. Just Google that. And thanks so much for listening, guys, and we'll see you at the parks. <laughs>